Hello everyone, this is Erin Thornberry, the Director of eLearning at CityU, and I just wanted to take a moment to welcome all of you to um, the second of our inaugural webinar series, um, CityU, or CSI CityU, I should say, Connect, Share, and Inspire. This webinar series is designed to connect us with our fellow teachers and learners, as well as share best practices and hopefully inspire you to adapt some new things or adopt some new things into your classroom, um, really engage your students in new ways and you know what we're all here to do, enhance our students' learning experience. So the first webinar series is Enhancing Digital Communication Through the Use of Kaltura. Um, many of you have already heard from E. Katrina Stoops and I will be introducing her in just a second. But before we get started, I just wanted to lay down some of the house rules for our webinar. So this is an interactive webinar, but we're gonna hold that discussion until the end. So as e. Katrina, uh goes through, goes through her slides, if you could take some notes, and uh, if you have any questions, hold them until the end, and we'll have a nice long discussion where hopefully we can get everybody's questions answered, and you'll also be sharing your own experiences, your own ideas that are inspired by what she shares with you. As e. Katrina mentioned earlier, if you aren't speaking, uh, please do turn off your mic and your video um, during the presentation. If you have any technical issues while we're progressing through the presentation, you can use the chat if you don't lose connectivity. Uh, to collaborate, or you can email bbsupport at cityu.edu if you get kicked out, and Michelle or I, um, who are monitoring our email, will, will be happy to help you get back in. So again, um, when you're not talking, if you can mute your mic, but during the discussion, we'd really like to hear your voices and use this new tool, Collaborate, to really connect with each other um, using the technology that's available to us today. So, e. Katrina Stoops, we are so excited to have her here at CityU. Uh, she just joined us in June of 2016 as the new Faculty Development Coordinator. And this webinar series was uh, all of her doing, and we just think it's a great idea. Uh, she is responsible for new faculty orientation and continuous development supported by the rest of the e-learning team, as well as the Faculty Development and Standards Committee. She brings a wealth of experience with her. Uh, she came to us from Bellevue, uh, but prior to that, she worked for many other institutions in adult learning, training, and instructional design. She's also a TESOL teacher, and I know she's looking forward to diving back into that, uh, hopefully after she completes her first year. And then she's also a certified Quality Matters peer reviewer, which is something uh, that we're really excited to tap into and utilize here at CityU as well. So without further ado, E. Katrina, please take it away. All right, well, Erin, uh, thank you, great introduction. And uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. I am very excited to see and hear all of you, and very excited to share some of my ideas with you and hear your thoughts and ideas about Cultura. So uh, in this webinar today, I'm going to give you an overview of our new CDU video hosting program called Cultura. Um, our wonderful e-learning team, and I'm a part of this team, turned on Cultura uh, a few days ago. And now uh, you can all have access to Cultura uh, tools through your Blackboard courses. And um, well, Cultura is very useful because it will allow both you and your students to create and share your own uh, multimedia content. You can embed your video, your um, images, your audio, your narrated PowerPoint presentations into Cultura, and then uh, embed them into assignments, discussions, um, blogs, wikis, journals, um, announcements, anywhere where there is a visual editor in Blackboard. Very useful tool, very easy to use. 
So we have several important objectives for this webinar uh, today. First, I am going to show you how to access Kaltura in Blackboard. Then um, I'll give you a very quick overview of the three Kaltura tools that we have available for you. And then I will also share some examples, um, assignments and activities that uh, you can develop using this Kaltura tools. And then at the end of the webinar, we'll have a discussion and um, this will be the time where you will uh, be able to ask your questions and also share your ideas and insights on how you would envision incorporating Kaltura <clears throat> in your courses and your teaching. Okay, so let's get started. So, um, how do you access Kaltura in Blackboard? So, as already mentioned, Kaltura is fully integrated in Blackboard, and you can access Kaltura anywhere where there is a visual editor. So, uh, for example, you are developing an assignment in Blackboard or a discussion, so you will uh, access Kaltura through mashups. So it's uh, there is a screenshot here, and you'll see where the mashups is located in the visual editor. So once you click on the mashups button, you'll see a drop-down menu, and from the drop-down menu, select Kaltura Media. So once you select Kaltura Media, Kaltura will open up in a separate uh, page. And this is, uh, 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 this is a screenshot of my media space in Kaltura. So I, I have uh, many videos uploaded into my media space in Kaltura. Of course, you'll have your own videos, but that's basically how your media space in Kaltura looks like. Kaltura has several options, uh, uh, several tools for you to choose from. There are totally five, but uh, we are going to focus only on the first three tools, media upload, webcam recording, and video quiz. Um, the other two tools, and you can see on the slide they're crossed out, um, we're actually not encouraging to use them at the moment because um, the, when we were testing them, there were uh, all kinds of technical issues with them. So we're not encouraging to use the last two tools in Kaltura, but media upload tool and webcam recording tool and media qu video quiz tool are great. They're very easy to use and you and your students can uh, develop so many interesting activities just using these three tools. So in this presentation, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of each of these three tools. So this is kind of a teaser. So, um, and I'll share my examples uh, with you. So um, of course, these are my examples and this is how I would envision using them in my courses. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go over the technical details that much. For example, how to record the video, how to upload the video, so rather I will just focus on the pedagogical aspect, on the um, types of activities and assignments you can develop using these tools. But I'm sure you will have lots of questions about, the technical questions about how to use these tools. So uh, to we anticipated that and we developed uh, several tutorials for you and your students um, and we posted them on Faculty Help Center site um, and each um, of these tutorials covers how to use each of the Kaltura tools. There are screenshots and instructions, really easy to use and really detailed tutorials. So we encourage all of you to check them out before you start using Kaltura. And of course, as always, if once you start using Kaltura, and if you have any questions, uh, you can always reach us at bbsupport at cdu.edu, and we can talk to you via email, phone, or in person, and help you with any technical issues you may be experiencing with Kaltura. 
Okay, so um, media upload tool. So this is the first tool that we have available for you. And um, so the way you would use this tool is to upload already existing uh, videos or narrated PowerPoint presentations or images or audio. Let's say you have, you recorded um, videos, you know, and you have them and you want to reuse them in your courses or you found some great videos on YouTube. So you can just upload them into um, My Media Space in Cultura, which will provide you with secure storage space for your multimedia content. It's really great because you no longer need to worry about where to keep all your stuff. So it's, you know, Cultura is video hosting program, so you'll be able to um, keep all your content in Cultura. And then the second tool is um, re record from your webcam tool. Again, a great tool to use uh, for both you and your students if you want to record your videos. So for example, you can record your video lectures uh, or your students can record videos. Of course, you will need to have a webcam to do that, but it's very easy and straightforward. And the last tool is actually my favorite tool and it is interactive video quiz tool. So when I was learning how to use Cultura several weeks ago and I um, came across this tool, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. So um, this is how I would use it um, in my courses. Let's just say um, you have a five minute, minute video lecture and um, you just want to, um, you, you, you want your students to view this lecture. And so you can just ask, your students to view this, to watch the lecture, or what you can do, you can use this lecture and embed interactive questions by using interactive video quiz tool in Cultura. So, and all of a sudden, your lecture is not just lecture, it is an interactive video presentation. And you can embed all kinds of questions, comprehension check questions, reflection style questions, inquiry-based questions. So this way students are truly engaged. They're not passive recipients of the content that you introduce and through your video lecture, they actively engage with the content. We'll talk a little bit more about this tool later in the presentation, but um, I'm really excited to see that Cultura makes this tool available for everyone. Okay, so now that we um, um, reviewed how to access Cultura in your Blackboard courses, and how, you know, the basic functionality of the three tools that we have available in Cultura. We're actually moving to the second part of this presentation, and I'm going to share uh, several examples of activities and assignments that you can use in these tools. So, how would you um, use a webcam recording tool in your courses. So there's just so many ways to um, to incorporate this tool. So one of them would be to record your video announcements and you would use a video or webcam recording tool to do that. So um, just record your announcements and post them and it is a really great way to engage your students and create safe learning environment for them. So for example, when we instru as instructors ask our students to work on the projects or assignments, especially if they're collaborative, team-based, group-based, what is important to do first is to create the safe learning environment for the students um, by uh, giving them an opportunity to get to know each other, to establish relationship with each other and with you as instructor. It is especially important to do in the beginning of the quarter, in the beginning of the course when students um, don't really know each other. And if you're teaching a full online class, it is really important to do because there is not, um, there's no in-person interaction in online classes. So by recording your video, uh, your announcement, so at least your very first announcement, you can, you know, kind of gauge that bridge and, you know, um, they can see you as a person, they can see your communication style. And here, um, I have an example 
uh, from the course that I'm currently facilitating. It is new fac faculty orientation. This is the course that all new faculty are required to complete. So here I welcome new faculty and um, I'm saying uh, we're pleased to that you're teaching with us and that you will be participating in new faculty orientation. And then um, I um, would add a video where I introduce myself talk a little bit about uh, CDU, about the course, the assignments and objectives of the course. And I would keep, for announcements, I would keep my videos really short, 35 seconds to one minute, so especially for announcements. Nobody would want to watch, um, you know, a video that is very long, especially if it's an announcement. Okay, another great way to incorporate webcam recording tool into your teaching is to actually ask your students to submit video recordings on the discussion board. So we all have discussion board activities in our courses and the very first one is always introduce yourself. So why not to actually ask students to record their introductions? And here I have an example. Uh, that I developed this presentation. So there are a series of questions that I would like students to um, discuss and instead of typing them they could record their introductions and I'm also linking to the tutorials on how to use a webcam recording tool. So it is important to when you are using a new technology uh, in your courses it is important to provide students with the resources that co cover how to use the tool so students are not spending time figuring out how to use a tool. And for Cultura, as I already mentioned, um, we e-learning team developed um, really great tutorials for both faculty and students. Just, you know, um, a simple link to that tutorial would be great. So that's another way to incorporate um, webcam recording tool in Cultura. So I have another example <clears throat> as well. Um, you could uh, use webcam recording tool to actually ask students um, submit reflections. And here I have an example from the course that I uh, taught at Seattle University. It was a TESOL course and for that course uh, we uh, students were required to submit reflections after each reading. So if I were to teach this course now using Blackboard, I would set it up in uh, journals. In Blackboard, so I would um, have, have ask students to submit the posts in journals and it would, would also give students a choice on um, how to submit their reflections. They could either record their reflections using Cultura webcam recording tool or they can type their reflections. And also one thing that I wanted to mention that uh, when you give students a choice on how to participate, it is a very effective um, teaching strategy in itself because we all have different learning styles and preferences and when we provide um, students with a variety uh, then we um, address this uh, various learning styles and preferences if some if students uh, choose to record their reflections that's great if they choose to type their reflections that's uh, that's fine too as long as they meet the requirements uh, for your assignments and that your projects and another example that I have that illustrates how to incorporate web, uh, web recording tool in Kaltura is to provide video feedback. So we all uh, provide feedback on student assignment submissions. Why not to record our feedback? It's actually so easy to do now that we have access to Kaltura. So here I have an example from the course that I took uh, many years ago as a student and it was a actually full online class and um, and this is the feedback that uh, my instructor gave me. I saved it uh, in writing, so she typed it. Uh, but um, I think um, now that we all have access to Kultura, it's just so easy to actually videotape yourself saying this. And I do acknowledge that not all assignments are the same, and for some assignments you would actually prefer to type your feedback, especially if you're sharing some links or documents. But for many assignments, record your feedback is um, so much more effective. 
And my very, very last example illustrates how to use another tool, uh, which is interactive video quiz tool. So I briefly mentioned how I would incorporate into uh, this tool into uh, my uh, classes. Remember how when I said, you know, if you have a five-minute lecture and you want to turn it into an interactive presentation. So that's, that was the example that demonstrates uh, the use of uh, interactive video quiz tool. So I kind of want to circle back to that uh, uh, example and um, add a, a little bit more. Um, so, for uh, so the way you could add the, so you can add the questions using the tool, and um, so um, for example, uh, you have a video lecture that. Uh, introduce and you have lots of new terminology, right? Terms that you're introducing in your lecture. So what you can do, you could add questions that help students better understand the term, uh, terms that terminology that you're introducing in this lecture. Or you can add comprehension check questions. Again, not for uh, for the purpose of actually assessing them, not for formal assessment, but just to help them better understand those concepts that you are introducing in your uh, lectures. So one limitation of this tool that I would like to emphasize is that the questions that you will be adding in your videos will not be connected to gradebook. So you cannot really use them for uh, formal assessment. Rather, you would use them to help students, again, um, as I said, better co comprehend and understand information that you're introducing through your video. So another example how I would use this tool is um, if I have a lecture video I would post I would uh, add like a open-ended question in the very beginning of my lecture and then while students are watching the video they are looking for the answers to this question and again what it does so instead of uh, just pass being passive recipients of um, information that is being conveyed through the lecture students are actively engaged they're thinking they're reflecting they're you know analyzing information so it increases their engagement improves their comprehension of the content of course helps them stay focused so Again, these are just my examples that would work really well for my courses, for my subject um, areas, for my disciplines. I'm sure you can um, come up with lots of other uh, uh, examples um, on how to incorporate these tools. Um, so this is a screenshot of how um, that would look like if you were to use this, uh, this tool, the interactive video uh, quiz uh, tool. So we have a FERPA video, which is a lot of information that's useful, but you know, not necessarily very engaging. So what you can do, you can add these questions, and while students are watching the lecture, they, you know, have a series of questions, and they respond to them, and they continue watching. So again, a great way to engage them. So these are all my examples that I um, prepared for this presentation and now we um, let's have a discussion and then for the discussion I have one question for everyone which is very simple uh, but I would like all of us to kind of uh, brainstorm other ideas and examples that um, you know you can think of that would um, you know work for your courses so how would you envision using Cultura in your courses so while we are having this discussion I would also like to challenge us and ask everyone to actually use their microphones and speak instead of uh, typing comments in chat. So um, this way it's just, you know, just more fun because it's evening and, you know, um, let's use Collaborate to its capacity. So if you have a microphone, if you want to speak, uh, raise your hand first so we can, you know, manage our discussion a little bit better. 
and then um, uh, you will either ask a question if it's a question or share your idea strategy with um, with you know with the group so we have approximately 15 10 15 minutes for the discussion okay let's get started so Kathy has raised her hand Kathy what question do you have or um, what, what would know. you like to share I should say yeah I don't have a question I was I was going to say that I think this would be wonderful at the end of my classes when I have the team assignment and in, instead of just me getting a presentation sent to me in the mail, it would be wonderful if they had a video of their presentation so the whole group could look at it. Yeah, absolutely. And what's uh, really great about Cultura is that you can set it up as a part of a discussion or even use groups in uh, Blackboard. So there's just many ways to incorporate that tool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I believe Stacy had something she'd like to share as well, and then Ellen. Okay, Stacy. Yeah, hi, this is Stacy. Um, so I'm teaching a hybrid course um, that does have a lot of collaboration that's required this quarter. And um, I guess that I'm still kind of learning about how Kaltura works. Would it be possible to like create an environment where they could collaborate within Kaltura? Mm -hmm. Um, well, um, are you, what you can use, you can, um, yeah, cult, Cultura, yeah, but you know what, why don't you use Collaborate Ultra? So right now we are in Collaborate Ultra. Okay. And we are collaborating, right? <laughs> so we're actually facilitating this webinar using Collaborate Ultra. So it's not that I, um, I'm trying to say no, Kultura, no, but Collaborate Ultra would probably work better for, okay. uh, for, 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 for this uh, assignment that you know you mentioned. Uh, so you can have students log in Collaborate Ultra and they would be able to uh, screen share. So right now I'm sharing my screen. You can see, you all see my PowerPoint presentation. I can mm -hmm. also share um, other things. I can share my desktop with you, where, you know, websites, anything. So you can share anything. So uh, students can also see if they use a webcam so they can see each other. They can collaborate via chat. In fact, um, we are doing another webinar um, that, um, so it's in October and it, it is Collaborate Ultra. So you, if you want to learn more about how to use Collaborate Ultra and incorporate that tool into your teaching, register for our next webinar in October. That's great. Thank you for the information. Yes. Okay, Ellen, go ahead. Hello, I'm going to turn on my video too, just to practice. Wonderful. Turning on my video. There I am. Hello. Hi. <clears throat> so I have an example and I have a question. Um, but the example I was thinking of in some of we're an in-person program, and so. Um, we have lots of opportunities for face-to-face -face interaction, but some of the things I was thinking about with this tool is often we're teaching students how to, to do very discrete skills that relate to their profession. So I, I teach in the counseling program. So I might be teaching students how to use particular counseling skills, that sort of thing. They might need um, some extra practice, right, away from what we do in the classroom. And so I was thinking that one way that we could use um, Kaltura would be to record different examples of clinical skills and then have video or have the video quiz about it as the students watch the examples and things like that. So I thought that would be a pretty cool sort of supplemental piece to what we can do in the classroom because a lot of times students are at different developmental places and might need more help, less help, those sorts of things. So that was my example and then I'm curious as far as the um, sort of the media database that you can build. Uh, can you pull videos over from the library? Is that legal, copyright-wise, and all that kind of good stuff? Oh, yeah. Ooh. <coughs> um, ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's a tricky one. Is it? Um, well, 
your media space and if anyone actually knows the answer to this question go ahead and chime in hey ellen uh, this is aaron thornberry uh, we are actually uh, collaborating with the library on how they can how we can utilize this tool uh, because they have been using things like youtube and vimeo and making uh, videos available for a set period of time so we are exploring ways to use Kaltura in that same capacity. Uh, the benefit of Kaltura, of course, is that it requires a login. So we are not making the videos publicly available um, on YouTube or another streaming media service. Uh, Kaltura uh, is only accessible through Blackboard, which requires the users to log in with their username and password. So uh, we'll probably have more uh, guidelines on what that actually looks like in terms of working with the library um, but yes it is possible and because um, you can upload videos to Kaltura just like you could to YouTube okay great thanks yeah I really uh, Aaron thank you so much I really like the fact that uh, Kaltura uh, media space so it provides the secure storage so nobody else sees it except you it's for you so it's your cloud thing. Dan has a question. Okay. Um. Sharing my video. Hello. Hello. So I'm. Um, so I have two things I was thinking about using this for, and one of them is because I'm in the DBA program. Um, my ability to speak with an instructor when. I'm traveling or being able to reach out and setting up uh, uh, meetings with students. So for myself also, because I teach students in different parts of the world, um, it would be nice to be able to use this for uh, have an office hour set time where they can log in and be able to talk to me about whatever they want to talk about. Uh, if they want to chat about their paper or why they got such a grade, it's much more difficult trying to talk on phone. At least I was going to ask you about the fact of being able to share the desktop and to um, use this. What What do you want? I do have a question, and that was why would it be more beneficial to use Katora than to use uh, Skype? Okay. So okay, and. Um Aaron, who is here in the same room with me, uh, Aaron, go ahead and chime in. I will try to respond to your question. So you described a scenario. So you are teaching a lot of students that are at a distance and you want to connect with them. So I would uh, actually uh, encourage you to explore Collaborate Ultra. So this is the platform we're using right now. So it is really great uh, if you want to, um, you know, do a webinar or hold office hours with your students uh, or, you know, um, do some kind of project. I, when I was teaching um, uh, one of, I forgot which one, which class it was, it was a long time ago. What I did to, um, to have my practice, my students practice interviewing. So one of the topics of the course that I was teaching was um, communication and interviewing skills, something like that. So it was a hybrid class. And, uh, you know, we met face to face and online and, you know, I decided to um, have them practice mock interviews in class and they actually said, no, this is not how businesses interview people now. Why can you please help us practice our interviewing uh, skills virtually? And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is such a great idea. And I used Collaborate for that. I, would, I, I set up mock interviews. So I uh, would encourage everyone to, uh, well, you, for your specific uh, class and uh, your demographics, I would encourage you to um, explore Collaborate Ultra to connect your students and um, have um, have them participate in projects. And I forgot the second. Oh, the second one. What's the what was the second um, part of your question? Well, I did ask the difference between Skype using this and Skype. Because yeah. a lot of us use Skype for business. Um, 
I do know that Skype doesn't have quite the recordability capacity yeah. for what we want to do. Uh, well, and saving you, videos. Yeah. So what um, um, you can use Skype for business, that's fine. But uh, two things, and Aaron, chime in, please, because you know more about Collaborate Ultra, um, uh, the use of Collaborate Ultra at CityU than I do because I'm new to CityU. But uh, the way I would uh, describe it is you have much more support with Collaborate Ultra. Collaborate Ultra is our CDU uh, tool that well, you know e-learning supports. If you have um, issues, your students have issues, we will be able to troubleshoot. Also, Collaborate Ultra has um, many more capabilities. It just works better for teaching purposes, and I've used both Skype and Collaborate uh, for teaching before. And I definitely would recommend Collaborate because it's just use. It's just it's easier uh, for it's easier to manage larger groups. If you have 20, 10 students who are logging in at the same time, it's just collaborate, uh, collaborate Ultra would be a better tool. So, okay, Erin, do you have anything to uh, anything else to add? Yeah. So, I I just wanted to clarify something that might be a misunderstanding. So, Kaltura is pre-recorded videos. Right, it's a library of pre-recorded videos. It's not something you're going to use for any kind of live interaction. Mm -hmm. It's asynchronous. It's something your students are going to engage with when you're not present. Collaborate is something that you're going to use synchronously. So you're all going to be in one virtual space at the same time. And I would recommend Collaborate in addition to what everything to everything Ekaterina said, um, Collaborate is integrated into your Blackboard courses. So you don't need to um, share Skype names. I know our students, a lot of them have their own Skype accounts. They do get one with CityU as well. And so there can be some confusion as to which account they need to use and therefore accounts need to be shared. Um, collaborate, there's a link in the course or you can create sessions with certain time periods associated with them, and the students click on a link, they join. If they join through Blackboard, it actually recognizes who they are and will give you a, a report of whether they were there in the Collaborate session with you or not. So those are some additional benefits to Collaborate. Yeah, thank you, Erin. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so I like um, yeah, that Erin mentioned the distinction between Collaborate, Ultra, and uh, Cultura. So yeah, Cultura basically is asynchronous, and Collaborate is for synchronous sessions, for synchronous type teaching. Okay. Um, yep, any questions, comments, suggestions? Alan, okay, Alan. I have one more question. I'm curious if I create a media database, what was that called, media uploads, then will those follow me from shell to shell? You know what I mean? Like if, if I were to go into one class shell and look at Kaltura, would I see the same videos in the next class shell? Yeah, go ahead, Erin, and uh, chime in on this one. She, she would know the answer. Yes. So uh, you have one Kaltura account, and so you can access the videos that you add to Kaltura from any of your courses. Uh, you also have the option to publish uh, videos and media that you add to Kaltura to that course, which means students within the course can also use that media. Uh, that means that they can browse the media that you've uploaded to add to a discussion board, you know, for a particular reference per se. Um, so yes, it follows you from course to course. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, more questions, comments, ideas, insights, aha moments. Okay, so you know what? I just um, came up with a really great idea. Um, <laughs> I have a few additional slides for you. 
that I could show. They're, um, they're like technical, more technical. Um, so um, if you want to uh, go over the technical aspect um, of how to use webcam recording tool in Kultura, I have a couple of additional slides for you. We, of course, we have tutorials that basically have the same information with the screenshots and instructions. So really good, easy, easy to follow tutorials. But I just thought that, you know, now that we discuss the pedagogical aspect of um, uh, the use of culture and how you would, you know, create engaging learning experiences for your students. Maybe you would want to kind of hear how to use one of cultural tools. Just go over this uh, steps very quickly with me. If this is something that you want. Uh, it shouldn't take me long, maybe five minutes maximum. I'll just go over the slides very, very quickly. And this is just one of the tools, right? Remember, we have three tools and we develop tutorials uh, for all three, but this is just uh, one, webcam recording. And uh, this is just a commonly used tool. That's why I picked webcam recording. So um, remember, Kultura is fully integrated with your Blackboard courses now. So let's just say you want to embed a video into your discussion board. You can embed video anywhere, assignments, as, uh, announcements, blogs, anywhere where there is a visual editor. Just But for the purpose of this um, demonstration, I chose um, discussion board. So first you will log in into your Blackboard course and then uh, select discussion board link on the course uh, menu. So it's highlighted on the slide, on the screenshot. After that, so you will locate your discussion board forum and if you have several discussion board activities, just choose the one where you want to add the video. And then um, you have two options. You can either add your video into the discussion uh, itself or into the reply, either way. So if you want to add it to the reply, then you will click on reply. If you want to add it to the discussion, then click on create thread. Okay, so then you will see a visual editor with all these menus and options. So Cultura, remember, Cultura is located under the Mashups button. So you will click on the Mashups button, and then you will see that drop-down menu. And from the drop-down menu, uh, select Cultura Media. So you'll click on Cultura Media, and Cultura Media will open up in a separate window. So um, you will see this uh, Cultura My Media space, and um, on the top right corner, uh, you will see several options. So since we are going to use Webcam Recording Tool, obviously you will select Webcam Recording Tool. So after that, you will see a kind of a screen pops up and it will give you several options, allow, deny, so you will choose allow and you will uh, click close. So, and then you'll start recording your video. So you record your video um, and, um, you know, just keep your video short, um, three to five minutes. You know, um, so you record your video and then I, when you're done, click anywhere um, on the video and it will stop recording. And then you will save your recording and also you will see an option back to browse and embed. So click back to browse and embed button and then it will, uh, so you'll see this uh, My Cultura Media space, that storage space where you have all these videos, right? So let's just say you have several videos that you recorded before, so you'll see all of them. So you will need to select the video that you want to embed to your discussion board. So once you chose that video, click select button. And then it will, uh, you know, 
add the video will be added to that discussion board so that's the example of how it will look like and then you'll just save your uh, discussion board activity and then your students will be able to view it and if your students uh, want to use this tool it will work the same way so this uh, the, I, I showed you how to embed it to the discussion board but again it's the same steps if you want to embed it into announcements uh, assignments blogs anywhere where you have this visual editor right so it just it works the same way and as I already mentioned, we have uh, really great tutorials for you that basically kind of walk you through the steps and sh they show you how to use each of these three tools. And we have a tutorial for students as well that posted on Faculty Help Center. And then on the fa help, Faculty Help Center tab, these are the tutorials for faculty. And um, there is another tab, Student Help Center tab. So you will see a tutorial for the students on that tab. And that is it.